Hey, it's new pedal day. Let's check out the Quaver Auto by Zeppelin Design Labs. So super excited about today's video. I just got a new pedal build kit in the mail and I can't wait to check it out. It is the Quaver Auto by Zeppelin Design Labs out of Chicago, Illinois, and it's a harmonic tremolo pedal. Uh, it'll actually be my first harmonic tremolo pedal build. I've built a few tremolo pedals before in the past, but I've never built anything with this specific effect. First, I gotta give a big thanks to Glenn and Brock at Zeppelin Design Labs. I emailed with them a little bit back and forth last month and they were kind enough to send me one of these out to review. This is the do-it-yourself kit. You can also buy these pre-built for a little bit of an extra cost off their site and I'll link that down below. So without further ado, I'm gonna get into this box and I'm going to uh, let you guys know what comes in the kit and my first impressions. So just opened up the box. First impressions are it was packaged very safely for shipping. I have no issues with the contents inside, so that's always a, a great start. Um, inside the box, there was a plastic bag, and inside that plastic bag was the contents. I've removed that, and you can see here the Quaverato by Zeppelin Design Labs. So this here is just the thank you card from the folks at Zeppelin Design Labs. Uh, you're also going to get a sticker. I'll probably put this on my bench as I do with all my other stickers. And then the last cool thing is this guy here, which is the faceplate that they provide you for their enclosure. Uh, you can see that it is uh, just a 3M adhesive faceplate, uh, nice silk screening on top. All the holes for your knobs are already perforated, so you can just push those out. I uh, really like this inclusion. So first with the enclosure, uh, first thing I'll say is it's not your standard 1590 BB enclosure, which I kind of expected. Um, it looks like they are building these out themselves. Uh, really solid enclosure though. Uh, it's pre-drilled, which I like. You know, I can imagine you know, your foot stomps here, your control knobs here. Uh, I think there's uh, audio and uh, your power jacks on the top too. So really like the enclosure. I also like that it's raw. So uh, down the road, if I want to paint this or anodize it or even powder coat it, I have that option uh, just to add some color to the pedal. So opening up the enclosure, uh, there's three bags and your PCB board. Uh, so first on the PCB board, uh, looks like it's really well done. Um, all your uh, names of your components are screen printed on there. You have the Zeppelin Designs Quaveretto version 6.1. Uh, in case they make changes down the road, you'll know what version board you have. So uh, really quality PCB, no complaints here. Secondly, uh, your first bag of components. Uh, this is your knobs, your potentiometers, your foot switches, and your audio jacks. Uh, looks like everything is PCB mount here. Uh, your audio jacks are the plastic audio jacks um, that are closed at the tip. Um, other than that, you have alpha potentiometers, and I really like the control knobs that they've put in here. They're all set screw control knobs, so they're not just pressure fit. So really like the components in this first bag. Looking at the second bag, uh, first thing I'll notice is the resistors. Uh, we have the blue resistors, so just a little bit better tolerance than the beige resistors. Um, other items in here, we have some uh, quality ceramic capacitors, it looks like. We have uh, electrolytic capacitors with 50 volt uh, ranges on them. And uh, yeah, also some film capacitors. Uh, other than that, inside here, I'm seeing your uh, nine volt uh, adapter, a couple LEDs. Um, yeah, some heat shrink. So quality components in here too, nothing to complain on, looks a lot like what I would order for my own pedals. Lastly, we have our static protected bag. In here, as you can imagine, we have our ICs, transistors. Oh, and it looks like some dip switches. So I'll have to do a little bit more reading about what these are gonna control, but uh, interesting to seeing uh, two dip switches in here as well. So really excited about this build, guys. I've already been online and downloaded the owner's manual. I've got the build doc as well. Uh, I've took a read through that. Everything looks really comprehensive in there. If you're a first time builder to pedals, I think that all your questions are gonna be answered with that build doc. They provide you a tools list of everything you're gonna to need to put it together, which really isn't a lot. And they provide you step-by-step -step instructions right down to the order of resistors that you should be soldering onto the board. 
Um, so with that, I'm going to double check my bill of materials to make sure I got everything and I'm going to head down and start building this. So I'll catch you guys back in a bit.
back from the bench and I've completed my Quaverato harmonic tremolo build. And I really hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse. You know, obviously with a uh, build that took upwards of two and a half hours, I'm not gonna be able to get every part of the build process in there, but I tried to hit on the key points. I also tried to slow it down in some spots so you guys could see what really went into, you know, building out the optocoupler and other interesting things to give you a feel for the build process overall. Um, first impressions of the pedal is I'm very uh, excited about some of the functionality within it. Um, I don't think you're going to find a tremolo pedal at this price point anywhere else on the market, especially with their DIY kit. You know, you've got tons of external controls to vary tone and modulation. You know, you've got your momentary switching, you've got uh, tap tempo, just really impressed overall with this uh, layout. Uh, as you can see, I've painted my enclosure white with uh, satin Krylon spray paint. I then went over that with clear gloss. I usually like to go satin then clear gloss just because I find it's less likely to run or bubble. I also like that I went with white. I think it goes really well with this faceplate that they provided which I really can't say enough about this faceplate. This makes, uh, this makes this pedal really pop, if you ask me. And, and it's really a nice feature that you don't get in other do-it-yourself kits. Um, other little things that they've provided, like the, the serial number sticker that you put on back, just really makes this feel more uh, impressive overall. So looking at the inside of this pedal, uh, you can see it's quite involved. Um, you know, for a do-it-yourselfer, I would say maybe this is a little bit above a beginner status. Um, not saying that if you are, were a beginner and you hadn't built a pedal before that you couldn't build this out. I just think that it would be a little bit of a learning experience for you and you would really need to follow that build doc and uh, take your time. They do lay out everything in the build doc step by step, so all your answers are going to be there if you have any questions. But, uh, you know, there's going to be a few things that maybe more seasoned builders will already know how to do um, as they work their way through this pedal. Definitely have some feedback for the folks at uh, Zeppelin Design Labs with respect to this board. I wouldn't say anything is negative, but uh, just some ideas that might, they might look to institute in the future or uh, some things that might make this easier for beginner do-it-yourselfers. Starting with the optocoupler, so I really like how Zeppelin Design Lab steps you through the process of building out an optocoupler. If you are not so much a beginner uh, pedal builder, you've probably done this before. So I think if you are a beginner, you get to put that skill in your back pocket. Um, but if you did want to make this a little bit easier for beginners and they didn't have to go through the process of uh, you know, putting the, the LED and the LDR and the heat shrink and making sure that everything was nice and tightly sealed up so no light got in, they could just provide you with a prepackaged optocoupler. Uh, these are definitely a little bit more expensive, but uh, they would make the process that much easier for a beginner. Personally, for me, I end up building out my optocouplers um, anyway. I've gone to these prepackaged ones, but I just seem to like tweaking a little bit too much, so I'm always falling back to the heat shrink, the LDR, and the LED. Secondly, the resistors, the vertical mounted resistors, um, I think there's 10 of them on the board. I just have a personal preference where I'd rather all my resistors be flat. I don't like the, the look of the uh, vertically mounted resistors. And I also find that having that much lead exposed always gives me a little bit of fear like something's going to get shorted out. That said, I understand that real estate is uh, at a premium on these boards. So the fact that they had to put a couple of them in like that, uh, not a huge deal, just be nicer if they were all flat. Next, I would have to comment on the potentiometers. So you can see here that they're using the metal backed alpha potentiometers. And you can actually see in there that they provide you a piece of cardboard that you put between the two rows of the potentiometers and the PCB. And this is just to avoid anything getting shorted out. Uh, I think one way around this could be them providing you the uh, plastic backed potentiometers. So this is a plastic dust cap on the back of this one. I think this would provide a little bit more protection from dust and would also remove the need for that piece of cardboard in the back of the uh, potentiometer rows. So lastly, with the ICs, uh, there's three ICs in here, uh, two op amps and then one 28 bit IC, uh, which I believe is an Arduino chip. Um, it was odd to me that they provided you a socket for the 28 pin 
uh, IC, but no sockets for the op amp packages. Uh, for me, I like having as much stuff socketed as possible in case something breaks or I want to hot swap things. I actually went ahead and had two 8-pin sockets sitting around, so I socketed my uh, TLO72 op amps that they provided. Um, I would like to see that in future packages that they provide you the sockets for those two op amp packages. So stupid mistakes time. Uh, obviously, I'm just as prone to making mistakes as anybody else. And I like letting you guys know where I went wrong, so maybe you can avoid it. Uh, there wasn't too much crazy stuff going on here. Um, one of my mistakes was just a simple swap of capacitors. I wasn't reading the document and I was trying to put it together too fast. And I ended up uh, putting a, a capacitor in the wrong spot. So I had to do a quick desolder and flip capacitors, but that was my first mistake. So the second mistake I made, little bit more time consuming has to do with the ground lug. Um, I forgot to put the ground lug around the depth pot before I screw all my knobs on. So I ended up having to unscrew everything, pull the board back out, put that ground lug around my depth and uh, put it back on. I could have just as easily grounded it to the side of the panel, but I just kind of wanted to follow their instructions to the T and for the 10 minutes I wasted, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Last mistake I made has to do with the jumper pads. Um, I accidentally soldered the JP3 and JP4 jumper pads together. So you're supposed to solder JP3 together and JP4 together, but not JP3 to JP4. Um, I noticed this when I plugged the pedal in and I wasn't getting that much of a tremolo effect. Uh, knew it had to be something to do with the low frequency oscillator. I double checked my uh, optocouplers to make sure they were firing. Everything looked good there. So a quick peek at the circuit pointed me to the, those jumpers possibly being soldered together and sure enough they were. So just had to desolder, resolder there a little bit and then the pedal was working as expected. So I hope you enjoyed that review of the Quaverado by Zeppelin Design Labs. I'm going to get into more of a pedal review than say a build review in a future video. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you have any questions on the build process itself, definitely uh, ask me a question in the comments below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, other than that, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.